Well, good evening and welcome to the November 4th installment of Pastors on the Porch. Our old friend Mr. Heater's back in uh, business tonight. Um, I don't know about you, but it's been a long month and we're only four days in, emotionally and and just mind-working, draining time in all of our lives. But before we get into all of that, I've got a couple of exciting announcements. Uh, first one, not as exciting, but uh, as uh, you may have seen in the email from David this week, uh, the new upper rooms are now out in the box outside of the education wing at Mount Lebanon Uni UMC. And the other one, which is a little more exciting, is we now have a one-stop shop for archives of all of our Sunday services. Well, not all of them yet, but I'm working on that. Of our Sunday services and of our pastors on the porch, as well as I'm going to be adding in some other uh, stuff to it, and that is on our website. So I will begin to promote that. It's www.mtlebanon.com umc.org all one word so it's www.mtlebanonumc.org and with that address you can or go into that website you can access our Facebook page you can access our YouTube page you can access archived sermons you can access archived Pastors on the Porch if you miss one. And in the near future, I am going to be working on setting up a prayer request page a, or menu and setting up a calendar menu and some other fun stuff on the web page. But uh, it's under construction right now, but I've got the archives started for approximately the last two months of services and pastors on the porch so um, you'll be able to find those there at mountlebanonumc.org so I wanted to uh, let everybody know about that but what a weird week month year whatever you want to call it I don't know about you but I'm emotionally drained already and it's only Wednesday and I've already had enough of this month, even though tomorrow is, uh, I become a year older uh, tomorrow. So uh, something for me to look forward to personally, sort of, but uh, it, uh, I've already almost had enough of this month, but uh, just emotionally drained, not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring. But I saw something today that really, really hit me and it hit me hard as I was scrolling through Facebook because I wasn't able to really concentrate on much of anything else as I was watching election results come in and doing math and doing things that my nerd self and my policy nerd particularly self came out in these last couple days but I saw something and it was a phrase that I'm paraphrasing here of a fellow pastor in the North Carolina conference and good friend I would say he's a good friend and he was a uh, site at Duke Divinity for me and kind of a, uh, a presence there for me and on his Facebook page it said I guess we know who our Caesar is And that struck me because it struck me personally in the idea that I have expended all of this emotional energy towards following this race for the presidency that is of this world. This 
title that is strictly of this world. Why do we not expend this much emotional and physical energy thinking and working on and talking about and figuring out our faith, our love of God, our love of Jesus, our ability to move closer to Jesus, our ability to express that love of Jesus Christ, that ability that we each individually hold deep in our hearts, deep in our souls, that allows us to tell each and every person that we come in contact with just how important Jesus is. We'll expend all of this, not only financial, which blows my mind that of the numbers that I've been hearing of the financial investments in these elections, how much good could come of this in this world, how many children could be taught, how many, how many families could be fed, how much poverty could be taken out of the picture, how many folks that do not know where they are going to stay tonight would have a place to stay if instead of spending these hundreds of millions of dollars on campaigning for a seat in a government, we actually use that money for the good of the world, good of the community, good of our brothers and sisters and our neighbors. But that's another topic. But tonight, this emotional energy, which turns into the physical energy that we have expelled into this one day, this day in which we as Americans, as citizens of the United States of America, have a chance to show our whatever you want to call it, show our ability, show our want for who will lead us in the future. But what it's shown this year, particularly in the last couple of year cycles, it's shown just how far apart we are as a country, just how far apart we are as a community just how far apart we are as neighbors, as brothers and sisters. I'm amazed and I love, again, my, my, my undergraduate work was done in policy social work and big picture social work. So when these moments come about, I, I geek out a little bit, but I love the fact that more people voted this round of elections than normally vote. I think I heard since, as a percentage, since 1900. <clears throat> um, the last numbers I heard were that by the popular by just actual votes cast, not by the Electoral College, but by the actual votes cast, Joe Biden will have had more votes cast for him than any person ever before. And I'm not saying that that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying that the fact that everybody was able to exercise this right that they have been given by our forefathers to express their opinion is amazing to me. But I'm so pleased that I was able to live through this. But I'm also so separated. 
I'm also so conflicted by the number of people that have lost friends over this election, the number of people that have lost even connections with family over this election. And I don't like to get political, and I won't get political. But politics is just a small portion, very small portion of what we're here to accomplish as human beings. Instead, the bigger picture and the more robust and the more important picture is to live out the life of Christ, to live out the morals of Jesus Christ, to live out the thoughts, the teachings, the being of Jesus Christ. Now, from what I've seen, we haven't had any large-scale, widespread issues revolving around the results, but we still have time. I'm pleased and hope-filled that we won't have any situations that arise. But the fact that we even are talking about it is conflicting to me. It hurts me deep in my soul that the people of this country cannot show the love, cannot show the community support because of one point in their lives. Now I understand that it oftentimes revolves into multiple points and multiple ways of living, but at the same time, friends, don't let this election come between you and your friends. Don't let this election come between you and your family. Don't let this election come between you and your community. Because there'll be more elections. There'll be more politicians. There'll be more stories. There'll be more voting that goes on in our lives. Hopefully not nearly as decisive and not nearly as I don't even know what the word is in our future but friends we're bigger than this we're gonna move on love will overcome I've got a friend ru running around she's behind me Puppies on the porch is trying to make a second appearance. Come here. She wanted to come say hi. So. But friends, we have a chance to go past the politics, to go around the rhetoric, and instead know that Jesus Christ is our Lord. That Jesus Christ is the one who controls us. Jesus Christ is the one who we live into and we worship. Not the person at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Instead, that's of this world, of the state. So let's, as a community, let our community know that, yeah, we may disagree. Yes, we may hold true to some beliefs of one person or the other. But the beliefs that we need to hold true to most of all are the beliefs that we are found, that are found in the scriptures. The law that we need to worry about the most is the law of the scriptures, the law of Jesus Christ.
the commandments of Jesus Christ that we spoke about in worship just a couple weeks ago. Love our God with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our soul, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Those are the two things that we need to worry about the most. Yes, our day-to-day -day actions may be affected by what happens in Washington. But eternal life is not affected by what happens in Washington. Eternal life instead happens with Jesus Christ. And when we follow Jesus Christ and worry about Jesus Christ and not worry and not have the anxiety, not have the fear of what is happening in Washington and instead focus our energy upon Jesus Christ, our Lord, our true Savior. Our Savior is not at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Our Savior is not in the House of Representatives. Our, our Savior is not in the Governor's Mansion. Our Savior is not in the State Senate or the State Legislature. Instead, our Savior is found in Jesus Christ. And that's our only way to eternal life, is through Jesus Christ. So if we, as a community, as a family, set these politics aside, move past what is happening in the media, and instead, concentrate on what's most important in our lives. Most important for eternal life. Most important for us to know where we are going. Most important for us to have a chance to sit at the right hand. That is when we, as a community, will be living into the community of Jesus Christ. And that is when we can put all of this rhetoric, all of this discontent, all of this everything in the trash can. And instead, We can live out the life of Christ. Live out a life that we dream to have here on earth. Live out a life that allows us to be with the saints. Allows us to sit at that right hand. And allows us to be given freedom from all that is on this earth. If you join me in prayer, we've got just a few minutes left. Lord, we come to you and ask for guidance. We come to you and ask for forgiveness. We come to you and ask for relief. We come to you and ask to be lifted of the anxiety of this world. Lord, we don't know who will be in that big white house. But that really doesn't matter. Because Lord, we know who's going to be in that big white throne. Who is already in that throne and who we are going to meet someday. We are going to Work our best, Lord, to be in that throne, to be on that right hand in order to give, in order to love, in order to feel what Christ has in store for us. Lord, yes, this world is a challenging place. It is a broken place, and it is a place in which we are all in right now. But it is only a temporary place, Lord. A temporary place in which we 
are here just a minute part of our lives. And instead, if we look towards eternal life instead of worrying about this life, so much more can happen. So Lord, let us focus on that. Focus on the eternal life that is to come. Focus on what it takes to get there, what your life has in store for us, and what we may do as your children to ensure that we are there with you, to ensure that we have a chance to find that place and that our energy may be focused on eternal life instead of the life of this world. Guide us each day so that can happen, Lord. And give us the strength to get through these days that are so tough, so hard, and such a struggle, both physically and emotionally. I ask this in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. Well, folks, as I stated at the beginning of this uh, broadcast, You'll be able to find this on our YouTube page. You'll be able to find this on our um, website, linked into our YouTube page. And you'll be able to uh, start going to www.mtlebanonumc, all one word, .org, O-R-G, and find everything in one spot. So. Uh, if there's anything else that you would like added to the web page, please let me know, and we will uh, do our best to uh, add that in. So thank you for tuning in tonight. May we all get some rest. May we all have a little less anxiety as we go to bed tonight and wake up tomorrow. That we know that we are living for eternal life, not the life of this world. Amen and blessings to all.